Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has done more than any Manchester United fan could have dreamed of up until this point. In his first 12 games in charge, he's won 10, returned United back into the top four, where only a couple of months ago it seemed like an implausible possibility. He's got Manchester United becoming the Premier League's most informed team, and he's just got United playing the United way again with the likes of Pogba, Rashford and Martial all bang in form. It has led to major thought as to whether Solskjaer should get the United job full-time or not. And United fans are looking at all the pros and cons of appointing Solskjaer as manager. And just like United fans, Gary Neville has been looking at the situation as well. And he has run through in his latest podcast what he feels are all the pros and cons of appointing Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, when to do it, looking at his form in the champion, everything. So what I want to do in this video is take a look at the points that Gary had to raise and give my own views on them and hear your thoughts on them in the comments as well. So before we get into the video though, if you are new to the channel, come on, go down there, subscribe to United People's TV and make sure you hit that notifications bell so you don't miss any new videos. But let's get straight into it. Now, with Solskjaer doing so well, reports have already suggested that Man United have made their decision and that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will be Manchester United manager next season. And here's what Gary Neville has had to say about that. My personal view is still that I think wait until the end of March because I don't think there's any real reason to rush it and to um, make that announcement today. And that's not because Manchester United have got seven or eight tough games in this next month. I just think it's sensible just to reflect over a three, four month period. But Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is putting himself in with a major shout of getting the job. Gary is spot on here. It is too early to say yes or no to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I did a video a couple of weeks ago, last week I think it was, where I said... I felt we'd know by the end of March with the run of fixtures. We've got PSG, Chelsea, Liverpool, Arsenal. I felt after that period of fixtures that we would know whether Solskjaer was capable of being Manchester United manager. Now, Gary, what Gary is alluding to more than the fixtures themselves is the time frame in that United need to give themselves two, three, four, five months before making that decision on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And that in itself, you think, fair enough. Because if you look at David Moyes, we rushed into that off the back of Fergie's recommendation. Louis van Gaal, I feel like we rushed into that decision as well. We saw him doing well with Netherlands. We realised we need an experienced head. Two and two equals Louis. Jose Mourinho was a decision that I feel we were forced into by our own faults because of what happened with Moyes and van Gaal. So whatever happens next, whether it's Solskjaer, Pochettino, Zidane, anybody in the world, United need to take their time over that decision. Make sure it is 100% the correct decision for this football club because we cannot afford to get this decision wrong. Moving on, Gary makes what I think is an excellent point about the risks of not appointing Ole Gunnar Solskjaer if things continue going right. And I'm looking at it, to be honest with you, from an... You know, I'm looking at it from a say, let's say, from an owner's point of view or from a sort of boardroom point of view, and thinking, if Manchester United continue in the vein that they are towards the end of the season, playing the way they are, the feeling is as good as it is. They get into the top four. The risk of not giving Ole Gunnar Ole- Ole- Solskjaer the job is huge, because if you're next October. They've spent £30, £40 million pounds to get a manager and a new coaching set up into the club, and they're in fifth all hell will break loose because people will say, how the hell did you not give the guy the job who was doing it well? So my view is at this moment in time, all, they, all I say all Holly has to do is win football <laughs> matches, but all he has to do is continue in the same vein. I made this point a couple of weeks ago as well. In the, this run of fixtures effectively gave Solskjaer a job audition where he could guarantee himself the Manchester United job if the results went right. But one thing I didn't think about was the potential backlash of if Solskjaer continued doing well, but United decided that they wanted an experienced manager, the best manager in available, that would be Pochettino. And then he came in, spent 30, 40 million, but it didn't work out and United were then struggling again. The backlash from that would be humongous. Now, would United take that risk or is that risk less than appointing Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in the first place, a man who doesn't really have any top level experience? There are risks associated with any decision that Manchester United make. But as long as the decision that was finally made at the end is the right one for Manchester United as a football club, not a business, I don't want no cheap option, I don't want no easy way out, I want it to be the right decision for Manchester United football club, then I'll back whatever that decision is. Whether that is keeping Solskjaer 
or bringing in somebody else. But what if, you know, results start going against United? If United can't overturn that defeat against PSG, which I don't actually think we will, we go out of the FA Cup to Chelsea and then we're left just chasing the top four. Does that mean that Solskjaer couldn't be given the job? Gary doesn't think so. And that's not necessarily, you know, he has to win against Paris Saint-Germain or he has to beat he, Chelsea. He's already got a lot of credit in the bank, I he would has. guess. Yeah. I think the way in which they go out, if they were to go out against the Paris Saint-Germain or if they would go to Stamford Bridge, I mean, Stamford Bridge is the toughest ground for Manchester United over 25 years. Mm -hmm. So to lose there isn't an embarrassment by any stretch of the imagination. I lost there, Sir Alex Ferguson, part of Sir Alex Ferguson's teams many times. But as long as the nature of the performances and the feeling continues... I think ultimately, if you come out of that four, five, six weeks time, Manchester United are in fourth place. And I mean, if they were still in the Champions League and FA Cup, then it's an absolute no brainer. But if they were out of those competitions, I still don't think it's a case of, well, Oli shouldn't get the job because they're out of the, uh, because they've lost to Chelsea or they've lost to Paris Saint Germain. I think it's more about the nature of what's continuing. And if it's continuing to grow and the performances are still good, um, I think that will be a. I think it will be very difficult for the board not to give him the job because the reality of it is it's too big a risk to be sat here next October, November, having put a new manager in charge if the manager at this moment in time is delivering title-winning results. You think about the next last nine, ten games, Manchester United at the top of the form table. So if you can continue that, then why wouldn't you? And that's from me being in a position two months ago stating Manchester United should go and get the best manager in the world that they can get and the best backroom team in the world. But what Ollie's done, I think, has is... charmed you as well. Again, I agree with Gary here. I do feel that Solskjaer can guarantee his job by overcoming PSG, beating Chelsea in the FA Cup, beating Liverpool at home. Those big results in the big games are clearly going to get him the job. But as much as I feel winning and getting the right results in those games guarantees he does get the job, I don't think getting the wrong results in those games guarantees that he doesn't get the job. And the reason I'm saying that is because so long as this good feeling continues, and the good feeling is coming not just because we're winning. We've done plenty of winning under Mourinho and Van Gaal, not so much Moyes. But the good feeling is there because the club is starting to just pull itself back together piece by piece. We're fixing ourselves and we're going back to being united, playing the united way, looking and standing with your shoulders broad like United should. Players wearing suits to away games. Everything you see and hear from Solskjaer is done in the United way and that is why the good feeling is there. We hardly saw that under Van Gaal, Moyes and Mourinho because they jarred against the United way. We all knew it, but it was a different, a different path that United were walking down at that time. And we all semi-felt it was the wrong path but you had to support it because it's your manager at your football club. And now we've got a manager in who's walking down a path that we can all agree on feels right and feels like United. And that is why the good feeling is so all consuming right now among United fans. Results aside, Solskjaer knows that if he can continue building or rebuilding, sorry, United in the United way, he's half got the job already because whoever comes in next has to embrace that approach. Whereas Solskjaer, it's in his veins, it's in his blood. 12 years as a player, two years as a reserves manager. United has been half of his life, certainly half, more than half of his career as a football player. He's been brought up in the United way. And that's why it's just working together. Salt and pepper, Woo. perfect partnership at the moment. And as long as that continues, He's, all, he's all, almost half got the job already. As for the football itself, Solskjaer has blown us all away with the results and how United have been playing. And Gary thinks he deserves a lot more praise than just saying he's been riding the crest of a wave. For United, it's more than just a bounce now in terms of obviously the reaction to Jose Marino losing his job. Um, the nature of the performances, we're seeing different types of performances. So yesterday was one where they came out quickly, got the two goals, but then controlled the game and managed the game and got the third goal in a really controlled manner. So it was a nice away performance ahead of what is a very difficult week for United with Paris Saint-Germain on Tuesday evening and then Chelsea next week, well, week on Monday. The game last weekend's Leicester, again, gritty, 
resilient, very different again. So we're seeing different types of performances away at, at it's, Tottenham. It's... I know, I think it's fair to say that Solskjaer's honeymoon is over. In two ways. You know, the first way, obvious. After the PSG defeat, the bubble burst somewhat. It's the first defeat under Solskjaer. And it exposed the weaknesses in this United squad. But on the flip side, I think it went to show just how incredible a job he's doing in the Premier League with that exact same squad to get us firing back into the top four. But on the other hand, the honeymoon period for me ended away at Spurs. And when I say that, I mean that everyone expected United to fail in that game. Everyone expected Solskjaer to be outwitted by Mauricio Pochettino and for United to be played off the park. Instead, he adopted a new system with a split diamond, United with two strikers. Nobody expected it, certainly Spurs didn't, and it worked. De Gea's heroics in that second half helped a little bit, a lot, but United won 1-0. Everyone expected us to fail there under Solskjaer, we didn't. Everyone expected us to fail against Arsenal away, we didn't. We smashed them off the park. It's like an old school game against Arsenal. Counter-attacking football was sexy. Then we were 2-0 down against Burnley, everyone rubbing their hands together. Here we go, Solskjaer bubble has definitely burst now. Two late goals when no one really saw it coming. So I think the honeymoon period ended then when, as I said, Spurs, because everyone expected United to go wrong from that point. But we've seen gritty performances like Spurs or Leicester. We've seen dominating performances like Fulham, like Cardiff, like Huddersfield, like Bournemouth. And we've seen poor performances like PSG. You can't ignore that. But Solskjaer has proven himself in multiple different scenarios with different types of performances in different types of games that shows he's not just a fair weather manager. He's not just going to be the one that comes out and wins 3-0 against Fulham but then loses away to Liverpool. He's capable in more than one situation and that is something that Gary points out as well. More than just the players relaxing and enjoying their yes. football. Oh, no, there's more, not, more than that. I, it, yeah. it absolutely is. Yeah. I think that in the first few weeks it was a case of get the mood right get the connection with the fans again, get the spirit up, get the players running forward, passing forward. Those things that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer mentioned in his interview with me yesterday, the simple mm -hmm. things in football and enjoying yourself. But now we're seeing some sort of, uh, we're seeing rotation, we're seeing some tactical nuances in respect of playing diamonds, which obviously happened against um, against Tottenham, which the game we covered a few weeks ago, which really did catch Tottenham out in that first half. Now, the next point that Gary makes for me is the most interesting one of them all, where he discusses how important he feels the fans are going to be in whether or not Ole Gunnar Solskjaer gets the United job. But I genuinely did think it would be a five month interim period where he would come in and just bring everybody together and get everybody happy because the whole club loves him. You can't not do, you know, this person, he's just a fantastic person. The players obviously have responded to him, the fans love him to bits. Uh, and continue to sing his name, to be honest with you, all the way through the match at Fulham yesterday. It was incredible to hear the fans in terms of, and the fans are almost in some ways now determining the outcome for the board because you can't go against that support. That fan base is incredible. It's huge. And they love Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and what they're seeing, they like. How much influence do you think United fans have on whether or not Ole Gunnar Solskjaer gets the job? Let me know what you think in the comments below, but I'd argue they would have a major impact, like Gary argues there. You know, every manager or every player that plays for Manchester United will know that when you've got the fans on your side, you're a different person altogether. Ask Van Gaal, ask Mourinho, ask Ranamel Falcao, who was cheered off on his last Old Trafford appearance despite having an absolutely abysmal season at the club. If United fans support you, everybody expected United to boo Moyes so much sooner than we did. But we didn't. United's fan base are loyal to those at United. It's that siege mentality, everyone against us. And United's away support certainly represents the feelings that are in and around the football club at the moment. Would United's board really want to go against that and not appoint Solskjaer if he's got the complete support of the fans? I'm not sure they would. However, Despite all of the good feeling around the club at the moment, around Solskjaer, Gary wanted to make one thing very clear with his final comment on whether or not Solskjaer should be getting the United job. And so it is now getting to a point where 
you know, in the next month or so, I still think that there's no need to announce it today. I still think that you don't need to put that pressure on because the minute that Ole gets the job, it'll be right. Who are you going to sign? Who are you going to get rid of? It's, it's a different type of questioning at the moment. It's still a very good atmosphere. People are sort of starting to ask him about, you know, you must be wanting this job now, Ole. <laughs> you know, it's getting, must be getting nearer. But I think once the actual job does come, if it were to come, then the questions would start to change. It'd become a lot more serious than it is now. And it's very serious now managing Manchester United. But he's almost got a bit of a free hit, you know, when he first came in because it couldn't get any worse in terms of obviously the mood. But now he's what he's delivering is not just an increased... Um, level of happiness to everybody but also I think genuinely top performances and that's not because of Fulham yesterday but if you look over the seven or eight games last seven or eight games you know even the Burnley coming back from 2-0 down is something to be admired. The current questions around Solskjaer aren't grilling at all aren't tough do you want the job will you be happy getting the job are you happy at United when was the last time you spoke to Fergie they're simple questions at the moment but as soon as Ole Gunnar Solskjaer gets that job, everybody in the media will want him to fail. Everybody else apart from United will want Solskjaer to fail. The pressures and the questions will change completely. So why would United announce, you know, even if United wanted to give Solskjaer the job now, why would United do that before the end of the season and change the scope of what his job is between now and the end of the season? It would seem like a foolish thing to do. When you think about it like that, it's almost completely logical. The absolute logical decision would be just to wait until the end of the season. And I think that is the logical decision. But I do still feel that if by the end of March United have got the right results in these big games, United would be mad, absolutely mad not to give Solskjaer the job full time. Now, I'll be brutally honest here in saying Never in a million years did I expect to be doing a video like this a couple of months into Solskjaer's tenure discussing whether he should get the job full time. Solskjaer has blown away my expectations, blown away yours and every other United fan's expectations and he's got United within a couple of months. He's restored so much of the identity that's been lost and demolished in the last five years and he's pulled it all back together. And he certainly deserves plaudits and rewards for that. But will United reward him with the job itself next year? I don't know. Let me know what you think about this whole situation in the comments because we're going to be talking about it between now and the rest of the season. And obviously after the PSG defeat, we tasted defeat. We've seen a humiliating performance, I suppose, in that second half against PSG. Has that made you change your mind? I don't think anybody's minds will be changed on one half of football. But let me know what you're thinking about the whole thing right now. We've had 12 games here. We've got plenty between now and the end of the season. Do you think Solskjaer should be given the job? Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, if you are new to United People's TV, make sure you hit the subscribe button down there and the notifications bell. But do you agree with Gary Neville? I want to hear from you in the comments.